happy Friday. I hereby present to you what it looks like to run for president now against Barack Obama. Senator, are you suggesting that heroin and prostitution are an exercise of liberty? Up until this, this past century, you know, for over 100 years they were legal. What you're inferring is, you know what, if we legalize heroin tomorrow, everybody's going to use heroin. How many people here would use heroin if it was legal? I bet nobody would put their hand, oh yeah, I need the government to take care of me. I don't want to use heroin, so I need these laws. I never thought heroin would get applause here in South Carolina. <laughs> You know, the last time there was a wide open race for the presidential nomination on the Republican side was just four years ago. Four years ago this week, 10 Republican candidates, including John McCain, Mitt Romney, Ron Paul, Rudy Giuliani, Mike Huckabee, and a whole lot of others, all turned out for their first debate. Four years later, it is Ron Paul again, but also Herman Cain, Tim Pawlenty, Rick Santorum, and Gary Johnson. That's it. And while Dr. Paul may have stolen the show with his pitch to legalize heroin... He um, was not, it should be noted, the biggest hit of the night. Take a look at who won the Fox News Instant Focus Group afterwards. 29 of the most important people in America sitting right behind me right now. Let's go right to them. Who won the debate? Let's go in alphabetical order. How many of you think Herman Cain won the debate? Well, we can stop right there. John, I want a word or phrase to describe Herman Cain. He answers the question most direct. A breath of fresh air. Common sense. How many of you walked in here with Herman Cain as your number one choice? Raise your hands. One of you. How many of you are walking out of here with Herman Cain as your number one choice? Raise your hand. Now, this is unprecedented. Herman Cain, former CEO of a mafia-themed pizza chain called Godfather's Pizza, runs away with the first Republican debate of this election season. I'm proud of the fact, quite frankly, that I haven't held public office before because I ask people, most of the people that are in elective office in Washington, D.C., they have held public office before. How's that working for you? <laughs> we have a mess. How about sending a problem solver to the White House? Herman Cain, the breakout sensation last night in South Carolina. While the mafia-themed pizza mogul won the focus group last night, uh, it is Ron Paul who seems to have won the money race in the 24 hours since last night's debate. Uh, Dr. Paul's website showing right now that he has taken in over a million dollars in donations since last night's debate. Uh, there's also news today that Congressman Paul will openly open up officially a campaign office in Iowa on Tuesday. Now, heading into this debate last night, the expectation was that it was essentially Tim Pawlenty's debate to lose, that Governor Pawlenty was the only conceivably viable candidate among the five on stage. As you saw earlier, Herman Cain easily won the instant Fox News focus group. So did Tim Pawlenty come in second? We had a clear winner in Herman Cain. Let's find out who they thought came in second. Of all the candidates, who would be your second choice for tonight? Rick Santorum. How many of you say Rick Santorum? Okay, clearly came in second. The one supposedly viable guy on stage does not poll as first or second, and there were only five people there. The post-debate critical reviews for Tim Pawlenty's performance sort of matched the focus group's feeling. Uh, the Los Angeles Times, quote, the event might have played to the advantage of Tim Pawlenty, the most heralded of those on the South Carolina debate stage, but it didn't exactly work out that way. The Washington Post, quote, Pawlenty had trouble breaking through. Politico, quote, the low-key Minnesotan failed to dominate the arena. Failure to dominate is a very cruel diagnosis, Politico. Most of what the first Republican debate showcased, though, was not any particular thing about any one candidate, but rather what is starting to seem like the divided heart of the Republican Party. Huge cheers when Ron Paul was asked about gay marriage, and he said he doesn't want government involved in marriage at all. It's a private matter or a religious matter. It's not for government. Big cheers when he said that. But also big cheers for Rick Santorum, saying anyone who would rule social issues out of what government ought to be doing just doesn't understand. And America. Big cheers for that, too. So which is it, Republican Party, fielding a candidate against Barack Obama? Are you big, intrusive government Rick Santorum Republicans, or are you small government Ron Paul Republicans? 
All of the Republican Party branding right now is very Ron Paul. Even if the Republican establishment doesn't like Ron Paul himself, they like the sound of his principles. Limited government, personal freedom, get government off your back, right? That's how the Republican Party is trying to market itself right now. But look at what they are actually doing in office. Take just the state of Florida today as an example. Uh, the new Republican governor in Florida, Rick Scott, is expected today to sign into law a handful of bills that right now are sitting on his desk. Is this small government stuff, which is how the party is branding itself, or is this big government stuff? You tell me. The first one is a bill that says any woman who wants to have an abortion will be forced by the state of Florida to have a medically unnecessary ultrasound first. It would also force doctors to read to the woman being forced to undergo the medically unnecessary procedure, a script about that procedure written by the Florida legislature, no matter what the doctor actually believes. A second bill, a bill that requires mandatory drug tests for a whole class of Florida residents, whether or not they are suspected of using drugs. Anybody seeking temporary state aid, even if that person has no history of drug problems, will now be forcibly drug tested by the state and they will be forced to pay for it. Third bill, a bill that punishes school children for wearing their pants lower than the government wants them to. It regulates public school pants height, a state government imposed dress code for all children about your pants. Is this small get government off your back conservatism or is this big intrusive government conservatism? This is a 24-hour snapshot of life in the Republican Party right now. The libertarian message, small government to the point of legalizing heroin, getting huge applause at the first Republican presidential debate, the man advocating for it, cleaning up in the money race after that debate, and then Republican governance, government-mandated drug testing, government-mandated medically unnecessary ultrasounds, government-mandated dress codes. The heart of the Republican Party is so divided right now that they cannot decide whether to cheer for legal hard drugs or laws about the height of your pants. This is going to be an excellent year of covering Republican politics.